Welcome along guys to episode two of the build. First of all, must say a massive, massive thanks to everyone who's left comments, suggestions in the last video of how to tackle the Hyper Project. So many comments. I've tried to reply to as many as I can, but the overall resounding opinion for how to strip the bike was to try and hang it from the rafters in some way. I can't do that. I'll show you in a minute, but I don't have any rafters. What rafters I've got is already holding up a lot of stuff. <laughs> I then put another 150 kilos of motorcycle on it as well. So we're ready to get move forward. Apologies for the delay. Roll the intro. So first of all, for those which have been asking, here's my new garage floor. Looks beautiful. It's given such a brilliant professional finish to the garage now. It's like a proper workshop in here now. Absolutely love it. Now I didn't I didn't record any of this because, you know, I just wanted to get it done. But this was done by if people who ask me what I used, it was from a company called Resin Coat and it's an epoxy floor paint. So it's not a full epoxy flooring like I've seen other people like Mont Mont Montanosity? Montanosity. Montanosity? Yeah. It's not like that, it's still a paint, so it doesn't fill in all the little holes and stuff, but it just gives a really beautiful shine to the floor. And, you know, it's completely sealed. It should last for many, many years, so I'm absolutely thrilled with how the floor's come out. So, first of all, for those who are asking about the floor, it's brilliant. A lot of people have been asking about engine paint, I'm going to use this, which is a VHT engine enamel. This is the same paint I used on my Fireblade project. Exactly the same. That was still absolutely like the day I did it after five years of use. So I'm going to reuse this stuff because I know it. I've used it before. To clean the engine up, I'm just going to be using wire discs in my drill to go over the engine, clean up that bare aluminium, clean off what paint is left. The casings are going to be Cerakoted. I'm going for the, or do they call it, uh, a gold bronze? Burnt bronze, burnt bronze colour. I'll, flap, I'll flash a little picture up on the screen. It's a beautiful gold. It'll look sort of original, but a nicer finish than these standard casing finishes. That's going to be done by a company called Factory Projects, and I'll put links to everything I'm using on this bike below. But Factory Projects are going to coat both of the casings, both sides. They're also, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of getting the yokes done black and blacking out all the forks as well. Getting these stanchions, stanchions, tubes done black. So they may also be Cerakoting the yokes in a matte satin black finish as well. I've also got carbon bits coming as well for motor composites. I've got rear sets coming from Sato. I've got a lot, oh, this it's, it's is really shaping up to be truly incredible. I've also got carbon handguards coming. Yeah, that sort of stuff's the last, the finishing details, but that stuff's on the way already. A lot of people saying I need to go open clutch because these are dry clutch. I'm going open clutch. Oberon, we're going Oberon open clutch kit and also the clutch slave cylinder. I've gone also from eBay a full stainless steel engine set. This is just a you know generic eBay kit. I think it was about 30 quid, but it's a full breakdown of what goes where. So we're going a whole new set of stainless steel bolts for the engine. I've also bought a stock sort of Ducati fixings to replace any other fixings I find on the bike. I'm not going to go full titanium. I'm going to go titanium on some of the fasteners, but I'm just going to replace them with... This bike isn't about losing weight. It's about making it look better. I've been collecting boxes to put bits in to store them up in my loft. Oh, I said about the, the rafters. I've got no rafters in here. That is my ceiling. So I've got a plastered ceiling. I do have some rafters here, just little short ones, but I've got all my trailer and lots of weight on here already. So I don't want to hang the bike on these rafters. So yeah, I, I can't do the rafter trick. So what I'm going to do is what I suggested, take the bike off the engine. So that's enough gabble. That's enough chatter. I've been itching to start taking this bike apart, so let's do it. So where do we start? I think I'm going to start just taking the seat off, taking the tank off. I think this is a dummy tank. I think the actual tank is a big tank that runs under the whole bike. Um, so yeah, let's just start taking things off. First bolt removed. First little dirty 
dirty area. One thing I thought this might be like this under the seat because it's like a big hole on the back of the bike with these. And if you do ride it in the rain, and I did ride it in the winter when there's a bit of salt down and all the shit, for want of a better word, comes up through the back wheel and it still gets layered inside here. So all of that is gonna need a damn good clean up. I might even go lithium with the but I know I said I wasn't gonna go mad with weight loss, but it's such big gains to be had from changing to a lithium battery. And these sort of seem quite slow to crank as well. So I think uh, a lithium battery could really help this bike. So I'm gonna do that as well. But okay, that's the first little surprise. I have also downloaded myself a manual for the bike. So I do have the manual to help me put this back together. So those who, those who sent me links to the manual to download it, really appreciate it. I had just bought one prior to uh, people sending those links to me, but thanks anyway. Whenever possible, try and keep the bolts in their original locations. Okay, so that's the uh, the bodywork off, if you like. Um, that, I guess in, I'm guessing that's the ECU here, fuse box. What I'm going to do now is just take some pictures of the way all of this wiring's routed, all of this setup. Same the other side, and same here on the rear, because this has all got to come out. I think I'm going to have to take the whole. Well, I'll take the fuel tank out. The fuel tank is this piece which runs all the way along to the back of the bike. Now these, I think, are only a relatively small tank. I think they're sort of 11 or 12 litres. These bikes have only got about 100 mile range because the tank's quite small. So I know there's companies in the US, and thanks for those who sent links to them, that do a 22 litre fuel tank for one of these, which takes it up to around 200 miles range. And it still fits underneath all of the, I think they just build it up here and the battery relocates slightly and it obviously comes down and fills where it can, but a 22 litre tank, can't think of the name of the company, I'll put a link below. I think I've noticed it's got the standard air box by the look of it. I know you can get induction kits for these. A few people have sent links to another US company that does an induction kit for this. I may get one of those. I may get the induction kit and then get the whole bike dynoed and set up. So that, that could well be coming later. So yeah, induction kit could well be on the cards. Let's get out the battery. Before we go any further. Oh god! Oh, oh that's heavy! Right, that is the cross member which holds the fuel tank down here. I think there's a bolt up under here holding the fuel tank on up this end, and then they're gonna try and lift this whole fuel tank off. Disconnected the little clips where we got, we got the, I think the pump is here, by the look of it. I think that's where the fuel pump is. We're gonna have to disconnect fuel line somewhere, but I'm just gonna see how this tank is held in and how it's gonna lift out and move all this off of it. I think this looks like this just pushes on. Yeah, that's the uh, starter relay. By the look of it, and then disconnect all this, get it all off. That doesn't actually undo, it just pulls through, so that's handy. Oh, sounds of those big steel bolts. That's the sort of things which is worth changing to titanium. That whole thing is just held together with this little push connector. Bye bye, tail light. So, slowly getting there. The reason I've taken all that off is it's got to cuff. Ooh, look at this. It's got to come off anyway. Indicators. It's got to come off anyway, and it'll give me more room to push this whole tank back that way and try and lift it out. Now, I see it's in pushes, it obviously comes in this way because the front of the tank sits in here. Doesn't seem to be bolted on anywhere else, I don't think. I think it just pushes in here, presses down there, and then this locks it in with this strap, which was over the top here. So I think, obviously, it's got fuel lines connected. I think I'll try and leave all of the fuel pump intact here and just disconnect the lines 
try and lift it off the bike and then disconnect it once it's off the bike, sort of lay it down here somewhere. <laughs> Let's see how we get on with this. It's catching here. Bloody boiling. We'll just take them off. I'm sick of trying to go out around it. Now we all come off. Oh, shut. Bloody took some petrol out. <laughs> Nothing ever easy. Breathe up. So it actually seems, I don't know if you can see, but the fuel line, this fuel line is actually got, it's clipped on, like clipped on at the factory with these clips which aren't, you can't basically remove, they're, you, know, you have to cut them. So perhaps I think it's going to be better after all to disconnect the fuel line at this end and leave the lines connected to the throttle bodies. Like I can cut those clips off if I need to remove them and then Jubilee clip it instead. But I think it's going to have to take it off here. This is another reason why I didn't really want to go in this way. Look how rusty. I can't even tell if that's just a bolt or whether it's a, an Allen key. Try and undo those. Oh God. Okay, I've got two of these out. I can start to smell a bit of fuel now and there's the odd little drip coming out. I presume this was just a cover not the actual fuel pump itself. If I pry it away, you can sort of see the fuel pump underneath. So I thought it was just a protective cover, but as I'm taking the bolts out, it's starting to leak fuel. I'm now worried that that is the actual fuel pump. I've got one bolt left. I'll take that out. Is it just gonna unleash all of the fuel out of the bike? There we go, mystery solved. It was a cover, but these bolt holes held the, held the pump on as well. I had two extra bolts underneath the cover, but all of them hold the actual fuel pump in. So as I loosened these two, this moved away a little bit, started leaking fuel. So I've opened up my new pack of bolts and I've replaced these two with two short ones just to hold it in place for now. And it looks like I can disconnect the fuel line just by a, a twist and clip type affair. So, oh, it stinks of fuel in here now. <laughs> Dirty little buggers. So I think now, I can squeeze this or something and turn it and I think this is a quick release type fuel uh, jobby. Yeah. yeah, there we go. That's wet. Wet and smelly. Easy. I thought that should just piss out. Normally you just connect the pump and the pump won't flow, flow the fuel. It's stopped. Stinks. So now I should be able to pull these lines off, leave them connected at the throttle body end, at the injector end. Where have I gone? So now I've got these disconnected here, I can leave them connected at the throttle body, disconnect them from the tank and I should now hopefully be able to get the tank off the bike. Let's see. If I can get up, I'm stuck. I need to bang them holes or something. Zip ties and a plastic bag. MacGyver. <laughs> this will do for now. Oh, something's caught somewhere. Still bolted here. There is the offending item. <laughs> what a pain in the ass to get that off. I don't know when that last came off, but that is minging under here. And I think you've got to take that off to, to change the air box, to change the filter. So God only knows when the filter was last cleaned. That, is, it, that has not been off for a while. But top of the engine looks good. Coil pack here as well. You know, we're, we're starting to, get this, really get this bike apart now. 
But yeah, that airbox, absolutely minging. God only knows what state that filter's in. <laughs> well, that's about it, guys, I think, for this episode. Slow but sure progress. That took much longer than I was anticipating, just getting the fuel tank off. You know, I think it's anything. When you're first working on the bike for the first time, you're learning its little nuances. You're learning how it fits together. I think we'll leave this here now, guys. I've had enough for today. <laughs> I'll try and keep these more regular in the future. I mean, this one's obviously... I had to do the floor and everything. So I'm going to try and get these up once or maybe even twice a week. So I'm not going to make them too long. I'm going to make them short, snappy, keep the progress coming. As new bits turn up, there's all my bits here. As new bits turn up, I'll obviously show you those of what's going to be back on the bike and new bits I'm buying. So, but it's not too bad. Things haven't been too bad. There's been some nasty little surprises, horrible looking rusty bolts, but the actual condition of the bike, like I say the subframe's pretty good. It's still pretty good, but just a little bit dirty. Let's see how we get on. But thanks for watching. Again, leave me your comments. Let me know things I'm going to discover as I slowly take this apart let me know but I really appreciate you watching guys I really appreciate your support on the project all your comments it, this is why I'm doing this bringing the community together over an old Ducati <laughs> see you later guys thanks very much bye